I'll quote one for instance, so that you trigger in your minds an urge to get more details of each of the amendment, not for the sake of arguing before a court of law, but also arguing to yourself and be accountable to your conscience. So much was power in the head, a provision that election of the prime minister is a beyond challenge under the constitution. This defines a dictatorship in its enormity. Svidhan Hatya Divas is also a day to pay homage to each and every person who suffered due to excesses of emergency, a phase unleashed, a dark phase of Indian history. These two important events, my friends, will generate continual awareness amongst our youth and present generation and keep them well informed of the darkest period of our post-independent history, the draconian emergency. This would also keep alive the spirit and flame of freedom. When I reflect on the role of judiciary in emerging India, I am eased to say, what a travesty of justice. A judicial verdict rendered by Allahabad High Court Justice Sina, declaring election of Srimati Indra Nehru Gandhi, then Prime Minister as invalid, triggered imposition of emergency and atrocious unconstitutional act. Second, and the emergency that sabotaged rule of law and constitution got impregnable coverage from the highest court of the land in ADM Jabalpur case. What a travesty. A shining example of independence of judiciary emanating from Allahabad High Court. And secondly, what happened at the Apex Court. Referring to all this only to indicate role of judiciary in emerging Bharat is critical alongside other institutions. I must make briefly a reference. This country is not governed by optics. To hit the headlines, oh, after four decades, a progeny has risen to that level of consciousness to undo what was done then? No, sir. These issues are too serious to be messaged just in media or attraction. These are issues that touch our mind, heart, soul. Bharat ki atma par chot hui thi. The people have undone it. The people have to safeguard it. Let us be on guard, be ever on guard to avoid another disaster to democracy. This is the role I emphasize for the judiciary. Other things will fall in place. All will do their job. Second, the role of all institutions is well delineated in our constitution. What is the role of legislature is known to one and all. What is the role of judiciary? What is the role of executive known to us? On a lighter note, let me reflect. Legislature and parliament cannot script judgments. We sitting in parliament or people sitting in legislature have no authority to script judicial verdicts. And similarly, I can say with confidence, judiciary cannot make laws or legislate or impart directives that are beyond legislations. Distinguished friends, this is a dangerous trend, trend if there is incursion in the domain of one constitutional institution by the other. The incursion may be subtle. The incursion may be non-invasive. That incursion has the potential to upset the apple cart of democracy. This can potentially end democracy. Distinguished audience, we have to introspect. My question to you, 
Is it happening? I leave this as, we, as a thought for all of you. You think within, is it happening? Are all, institu are all institutions, the legislature, judiciary and the executive operating within their areas or are they in expansion mode to operate in the area of the other? I leave it as a thought for your minds. Distinguished audience forces inimical to Bharat. Within and without are in overdrive to impede our growth and operate at multiple levels, tenting, tarnishing, targeting, demeaning our constitutional institutions. Falling prey to these is fraught with dangerous consequences. Again, I pose a question for your consideration and thought provocation. Do we see this looming danger? You are the best just to decide. Distinguished audience, I conclude with a quote from Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar had the occasion to reflect many a times in the Constituent Assembly that lasted for three years, a little less than three years, and 18 sessions. But this one, on November 25, 1949, was his last address to the Constituent Assembly I caught. I am quoting father of the Indian Constitution, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. I quote, what perturbs me greatly is the fact that not only India has once become, before lost her independence, he was not worried that India once lost independence. I continue, but she lost it by the infidelity and treachery of some of her own people in court. The sculptor of Indian constitution had diagnosed that we lost independence because there was infidelity and treachery of some of our own people. I further quote him, will it still repeat itself? It was repeated in 1975. I continue, will history repeat itself? Is this thought which fills me with anxiety, this anxiety is deepened by the realization of the fact that in addition to our old enemies, in the form of caste and creeds, we are going to have many political parties with diverse and opposing political creeds. Will Indian place the country above their creed or will they place creed above the country a question is posed. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar ventures to answer the question posed by himself. I quote, I do not know, he said, but this much is certain that if the parties place creed about country, our independence will be put in jeopardy a second time and probably be lost forever. This eventuality we must all resolutely guard against. We must be determined to defend our independence with the last drop of our blood and coat. Distinguished audience, the man, the sculptor of Indian constitution, in his last address of the constitutional assembly, that never met thereafter, it gave the constitution to us his worst fears were realized in 1975 and we suffered emergency and principally because the institution that was supposed to be our protector, the judiciary, failed us. Let us hope and work this does not happen. Personally, I am confident our judicial system is so robust, so independent and meant by people of superior intellect and commitment. This cannot happen. But that does leave us with a reason to be ever vigilant and be on guard. I'll give a small illustration. As vice president, while the sun was at peak, I went to the Indo-Pak border in Badmir. The sun was peak and it was month of harsh summer. I chose that time. Our people were 
guarding the border i saw camels being driven i see people facing the heat that heat 46 47 8 degree in that uniform battle ready all of them were there there was nobody on the other side i took a binocular nobody could be seen our people were alert and why enemy will choose his own time his own strengths we therefore have to be ready even for a split second that is the question i am giving to you and that is something with the judiciary must have in mind distinguished audience the position that i hold and the deep revolution revolution connect that i have with judiciary persuade me to contribute by silence on the present scenario which people say is distanced from conventional groove i put to some members before coming to this place role of judiciary and one came quickly with one response sir difficult it is changing by the day <laughs>